And we're live. It's Friday night. You're very welcome to the lock-in. Every Friday we meet here for a few stories, a few sips, raise a glass to each other to our health and to make sure we're all in good form. And over the next eight to nine hours, we're going to have a bit of crack, sipping our way through a few single malls, a few Irish single malls, and we're going to have a good time tonight. So thank you all for joining. Uh, let me know in the comments where you're joining from. But tonight is all about Ireland's single malls. I'll be bringing in uh, one and maybe two special guests in a minute. Uh, so uh, make sure you've got some single malls in your glass. Get a comfortable chair. Sit back. Enjoy yourself. We're going to have a good old night tonight. Uh, sipping on Ireland's single malls. <laughs> As always, you're all very welcome to the lock-in. I have no fire behind me tonight. I'm coming to you from San Diego, the west coast of uh, the United States, back in California after a, a long flight, after 26 hours of travel there on Wednesday. I'm back. I'm rested. I'm ready to drink some whiskey. I'm looking forward to a good old night, a good old session tonight with all of you. So hi to MP and Shimini and John and James and Peter and Gregor and everyone joining in tonight, Steve uh, in Colorado. Good stuff. He's drinking his Black Barrel Old Fashioned. So we're going to have a great night tonight, sipping on three very different whiskeys, all single malts. But before we do that, and before we bring in our, our first guest this evening, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this whiskey that you see here. This is the Stories and Sips whiskey, the story, which was just launched uh, over the last few weeks. We pre-sold out in under four hours of our very limited release of the story, a collaboration with JJ Corey, a fantastic collaboration, which came together very, very quickly. This bottle has now started to make its way across the United States, those who have ordered. And in fact, we saw pictures of the first bottles of the story landing in people's homes today, which is great to see. So our, our bottle, the story, is making its way across the continent today. There's a little close-up of the bottle. This is the story, a blended whiskey of 50% malt, 50% grain, and some 1991 single malt in this bottle as well. We will be launching this officially on December 16th. So mark your calendar. It's a Wednesday night and JJ Curry and Stories and Sips are going to put together a virtual event to launch this whiskey. So if you've been lucky enough to get your hands on one of these bottles, make sure you mark your calendar. We're going to have a good old session launching the story. It's been a few months in the making. I'm delighted to see it finally come to fruition. I haven't even opened my bottle yet. I'm waiting till the launch event itself where I can open it with everybody else who bought their uh, bottle of the story as well. Um, so tonight uh, we're moving on. We're, we're going to be sipping on single malts. Before we move on to that, before we talk about our, our bringing our first guest, a reminder that every week we have a podcast, and this week was no different. Uh, this week we had the fantastic opportunity to sit down and chat with a master distiller, a master distiller with twenty plus years in the Irish whiskey industry, and that was Daryl McNally, formerly of Bushmills, uh, and Daryl McNally today, of course, is the master distiller of the Dublin Liberties Distillery. So if you haven't already checked out. Uh, that episode, you can find that on storiesandsips.com or wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Uh, a great chance for me to ask a master distiller questions about his craft, about how to build a whiskey portfolio, but how to how he uh, set about opening a distillery and building the distillery from the ground up. And he was there right at the start. Uh, a remarkable chat uh, with a remarkable remarkably experienced and skilled uh, distiller in the world of Irish whiskey. So we're very lucky to chat with Daryl this week. We'll be doing more with Dublin Liberties Distillery over the coming weeks, so stay tuned. There may be uh, a chance for um, the Dublin Liberties Distillery to make an appearance on the lock-in. So stay tuned, and we'll give you more information on that. Let me see. Um, Bruce says he's going to try not to open his bottle of the story when he gets his hands on it. Look, if you paid for it, you can open it up whenever you want. Uh, that is your choice, of course. But I'm waiting to open mine on the uh, on our launch night, December 16th, which is coming not too, not too far away. And hopefully, well, we're aiming for all of these bottles to have landed by then. So that's the story. Uh, really excited about that launch. And you're all invited to join the launch event. It'll be on Stories and Sips Facebook, just like this is, and we'll do we'll uh, we'll post the details of that over the next week so that you can join in and hear more about it. We're planning a really really fun event. 
Uh, all right, so let me see. Let me check the comments here. Kieran is joining us with some Waterford Dunbell in the glass. Great stuff. We'll be drinking that ourselves shortly. We've got a bottle of Waterford Dunbell here. We've got Bushmills 2008 Muscatel cask we'll be sipping on. And we've got WD O'Connell Single Malt PX 18 year old, which we'll be sipping on as well. So without further ado, why don't we bring on our first guest? And that is the Prince of Paddy himself, Mr. Michael Cowman. You're very welcome. Uh, Barry, it's great to be back, you know, uh, just like part of the furniture here at, at one point. And I've been away <laughs> for a while, but it's good to be back. Well, listen, it has not been the same without you. And the fashion sense on the show has taken a, a sharp nosedive in your absence. But I'm delighted to see some kind of a garb that, I don't know, is that some kind of dinosaur garb on you tonight? Yeah, um, you know, any, for any of uh, the American watchers, the Late Late Toy Show, which is an Irish institution, was on tonight. So I said I would dress up for the occasion, you know what I mean? And obviously doubles up with coming on stories and sips then as well. Something a little bit playful, like, you know. I want to talk about the Late Late Toy Show um, in a second because it's an institution in the world of, in, in Ireland and uh, in Irish childhoods growing up. And I want to help explain to our American audience what the Late Late Toy Show is. But for those who shockingly may not know who you are, perhaps, Michael, you could explain your role within the Irish whiskey industry today. Yeah, uh, as you usually in, introduce me, bon vivant. Uh, but uh, other, than, other than general bluffer, no. So I, I work for High Spirits, which is a subsidiary of Sazerac who own the Paddy brand. So Paddy being one of the oldest and most storied Irish whiskies, obviously. Hence the name you can see under it, the, the Prince of Paddy. Um, and so I, I work in sales, business development for, for the brand. So we cover Paddy for one and then Buffalo Trace and a few, uh, anything from the Buffalo Trace distillery and a few other bourbons that I'm sure some of your American watchers would definitely be familiar with as well. But uh, I suppose my my first love is certainly Irish whiskey, and that's that's where the majority of my knowledge lies. And I suppose how how I end up here every every so often. Not knowledge and, being a strong strong word for for well, what I have. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, a couple of facts loosely strung together, uh, if that's how we define knowledge. But I, I think your your presence is. Uh, no, it's always a, it's always a, a, an addition, a plus to the lock-in, despite what we'll hear in the comments over the course of your your narrative. You're always a welcome addition. <laughs> it, it provokes it provokes debate, and you know anything that provokes debate and conversation is is probably welcome, Barry. That's right. That's right. Um, help us understand before we talk about the single malts tonight, because uh, I'm, I'm I'm interested to to get your thoughts on them and, and us to have a discussion on single malts, but. Talk a little bit about Paddy because obviously that's where uh, that's where your bread is buttered today. Uh, help us understand uh, the Irish whiskey component of the Sazerac portfolio, which is Paddy Irish whiskey. Yeah, so I mean, Paddy is is one of the older brands that you know it's it's one of the blends that has been around and has always been a staple in Irish households. And it's funny when you talk about it there and you talk about the toy show. You know, it's just one of those things that was always in my house. You know, we watched the toy show. You always had a bottle of Paddy there. You always, you know, there was a few few different blended Irish whiskies, but the bottle of Paddy was always very firmly there. And when we decided, when you said, you know, we, we'll talk about it first, I actually went to the cupboard and I'm at home here and I pulled out this glass and I'd say every family in Ireland, every house in Ireland has one of these glasses, you know, and it just reminds me of my uncles coming up at Christmas time and being served, you know, a, a measure of whiskey thereafter after the dinner and uh, it had always been one of these but Paddy <laughs> is 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 one of the only brands that has all three types of Irish whiskey in it so it has it has it has um single grain it has grain pot still and malt in it so I think who better qualified to talk about the various categories of Irish whiskey than, than myself Bart who, who nobody better? really probably, I mean nah, look nobody. let's be honest probably absolutely anybody but you you got me because I'm cheap so we we tried everybody else and we we'll, we got we we eventually landed on you uh, when and so look nobody better qualified you're right uh, everyone everyone else qualified was taken tonight the yeah. th so the three types of whiskey in here single malt pot still and grain and um, paddy is like you mentioned a historic brand every house will have a bottle of paddy in it but not all houses will have a bottle of paddy with whiskey in it sometimes it'll just be filled with orange for when you go out for a walk in the woods you take a, a an empty bottle of paddy filled with orange <laughs> yeah and I mean Barry you're you're a cork man so you probably Paddy was probably more of a staunch drink in your household even than, than my own because it's very much associated with with Munster and with Cork and you know Paddy Flaherty who was the man himself as we as we like to refer to was a bit of a bit of a legend and I suppose he was 
the first whiskey brand ambassador, we, we could almost, almost put him as, you know, when people, he, he reinvented sales by going into every bar and standing everybody a drink of, of Paddy, Paddy's, uh, Paddy Irish whiskey, you know? So I think we have a lot to be thankful for and anybody in a position like myself have a lot to be thankful to, to Paddy Flaherty for. Well, one of the reasons we invited you on is because we knew that Paddy would be a lovely Cork connection. And we have to start off every lock-in, or at least somewhere through the lock-in, pay homage to Cork and a little, a little hat tip to Cork. But you brought it up without any prompts whatsoever. But, you know, you, you walk around Cork and there isn't a there isn't a corner you, you can turn without seeing the Paddy logo emblazoned on a pub window or even a stained glass window in Cork pubs uh, to this day. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's just a testament to how storied the brand is, how long it's been around, and what a fundamental part of Irish whiskey history that it is as well. Um, I, I think Eric Ryan, who who we both know, uh, he told me a story once, you know, that if you look at Paddy, it has the, the map of Ireland whiskey, as it's sometimes called. And if someone was going to have a particularly large night, they might say, we're going to drink it the whole way down to Cork tonight. Like, you know, so <laughs> I think there's, there's some great stories around Paddy. And it's one of those brands that has been around forever, and we're obviously trying to tr- trying to bring it back. And I don't think it got the love that it probably deserved for the last the last few years. Through you know what I mean, through no fault of anyone's, it was just a, a business issue. And I think we're really bringing it back now, and uh, hopefully we're going to bring it to to glory again. And the American audience now would might know it more as Paddy's apostrophe yeah. s, much to the delight of many Irish. Uh, the old apostrophe s. Yeah. The, the thing about this is right that I, I was staunchly against adding an S to, to it when I saw that. I was like, it's ridiculous. What I've learned since I started working for the brand is absolutely everybody calls it Paddy's Whiskey in Ireland. You know, they're like, oh, you work for Paddy's, do you? And despite what everyone says, that is what people refer to it as. So I, I always kind of laugh when, obviously, you know, we're very protective of Irish whiskey history and heritage. And I, I don't think we'll be adding the S in Ireland anytime soon. Um, but certainly... We, we all say paddies and, and anybody it annoys me it no end that that's like and people say tealings i hate Jemisons. it it just ah oh, it grates on me so much i don't know why adding the s unnecessarily it's an yeah, american thing too though I, I think it's funny when you see it on menus and stuff as well and in various places and they'll they'll just unprompted add the s and i'm kind of going yeah it's not on the bottle guys you know what i mean where are you pulling this s from you know but i think it is it's just uh it's just how people refer to things i suppose it is Paddy's whiskey. It does belong to Paddy. Um, he is the original, the man himself. So, yeah, look. I suppose uh, we, we won't like, fall like, out of it. It's not the only one that has the S from from a, a, a or from a name. Like, I mean, Powers um, yeah. itself, without the apostrophe. Um, <laughs> it, oh, but there was an old line, it's not Powers, it's ours. <laughs> but I, I remember work, I remember working in, in our, when I used to work in Irish distillers. And someone said to us, it's Three Swallow. And I went, no, no. Oh, no, yeah. it's three swallows, and I went and looked at the bottle, and I went, "Oh, yeah. okay, right. It's not. I've been adding the S as well. Like, you know what I mean? So, the, there so is we put the S in wrong places, and we take it off in the wrong places. Yeah, we're not so, just reorganize the S's. So we, we're just we're just partial to adding or taking away an S in Ireland. Clearly, like, so look, we won't we won't uh, we won't fall out. Jemison's is the worst. <laughs> that's it. That's the worst. That's the worst. Jemison's. Yeah. yeah. Do you say Jameson? Jemison, what's your particular yeah, Jem- Jemison? Yeah, no, no, Jemison with like Jemison. Like, the, like a diamond, like a diamond is a gem, so a Jemison. Yeah, interesting. I wonder J- does that uh, Jemison, pronunciation? Jemison. No, Jemison no? for me is an American is an American parlance. You know, that's that's what it is for me. Interesting. Okay, well, we and then Jemison have to, uh, is just off the walls, like. Yeah, that's that's madness altogether. That's the kind of stuff that would get you committed. Um, before we move on to the first single malls, let's talk about the toy show. So there's a lot of people here who joined in after the toy show. So the toy show is an Irish institution. It's been going for probably 30 years. Um, yeah. It's certainly there from my childhood. What is the toy show, Mike? The toy show is, well, previously, I suppose, it was a showcase of toys coming up. You know, So it's always generally, what is it, the, the, last, the last Friday in November? Um, and they'll come on and the host will go through a range of toys and they'll have kids on to try them and there'll be various mishaps because, you know, the old saying, you shouldn't work with children or, or animals, you know, that, that kind of thing. And, and uh, you see, you get the various mishaps. But I suppose in the last few years, it's very much become a showcase for kids and the resilience of kids and stuff. And it's an absolute emotional roller coaster. I genuinely need a whiskey after watching that show because 
it really does tug on the heartstrings fairly fairly hard. It really does. I I cracked open a bottle of blue spot as I was uh, sip, as I was watching it. I thought my I'll be shook like I won't be able to do the lock in. It's a uh, it's an absolute heart like it just tugs at the heartstrings. It's real Ireland. It's unre it's 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 virtually unrehearsed. It's virtually yeah. unscripted, and you don't know what the kids are going to say. And that's the absolute joy of it because exactly you yeah. don't you have no idea what the kids are going to say. A buddy of mine from Scotland, um, I posted a few tweets and I, I threw up a few things on Instagram. And he, he just wrote me a message. He was like, I've never heard of this before. I've just started watching it. This is amazing. He was just like, this is class. He, he just he just couldn't get over it. He was like, this should be syndicated around the world. <laughs> That's the thing. You probably could, but I think there is a certain yeah. Irishness to it. And I think for all, he gets maligned, uh, the host, Ryan Tuberty. You know, a lot he of does. people don't like him, but he's I think he's excellent with kids. And he, he really he really shines every time when the, the toy show's on. So, yeah. Fair play. And it's it's part of um our so the the late late show itself is the longest running talk show in the world and yeah. uh, continuously running talk show and the the toy or late, yeah the late late show itself and the toy show component is that once a year thing but I encourage all of our American audience check it out I'm putting the link up on the screen there rte.ie slash player and it allows anyone in the world to watch this um, most of the Irish content wouldn't be available to people around the world but the toy show is available to everybody every year and it's a, it is pure ireland like it's 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 the purest of ireland really because it's kids who are sick and kids who are just joyful and and it's just it's just beautiful <laughs> oh there was a i mean there was a kid on earlier they had they had a, a young guy from uh from cavan and he was just you know he was telling us that he was t a young guy from border county talking about uh his michael collins book and it, and the guerrilla warfare and you know <laughs> this kind of this kind of crack and it was just it's just brilliant it's just pure <laughs> unscripted joy you know it is beautiful, and and it's got a lovely focus on books every year. And there's yeah. there's no focus on technology. It's about <clears throat> tactile toys. It's a wonderful thing. And long may continue. And this year, this year I, I don't even know if they did any toys. You know what I mean? I, I barely remember the toys. It's it's very much about the kids and showcasing the kids and just the the resilience kids. And tonight, one of the great things I think they raised about you know they put up this text line at the start of the show or a call in line to raise some money for charity. I think yeah, Lorcan Dunn says it there. I think they raised about four and a half million by the end. Maybe maybe oh. more. Like someone someone can probably text in there and say, but they said yeah. they wanted to raise about five hundred thousand. And I think the last I heard it was four and a half million. So that's incredible. where where it goes. But look, we're we're generous as a nation. I think if you if you roll yeah. it back to Live Aid, we give more per person generally in charity than than a lot of other countries. So look, there's a couple of things to be proud of in Ireland. That's that's certainly yeah, absolutely one. absolutely. And the host Ryan Tuberty, I think he said it best. He said in in the in the middle of a pandemic at our at our toughest time the irish people dig deep and they gave and they give and they we've done that for generations and even mrs stories and sips herself like looked over at me when when they announced how much money was raised she said you're you're a, you're a country the size of, of indiana how do you give so much like and it's it's a beautiful thing yeah no it is it is and my mother actually looked at me she goes where where do people get all the money and i said well man it wasn't one person like and i mean there was there was quite a few people <laughs> donating you know uh, <laughs> But I know I just yeah I do think it's great it is it's a it is a fantastic part of being Irish um it no is more, no more so than whiskey look it is a fundamental part of the fabric of being Irish I think the the set to this year it looked like there were shelves of whiskey behind Ryan Tuberty and if you look back on the player you'll see all these brown bottles with no labels uh, and clearly if they are whiskey bottles and there's no labels on them and I was pausing to zoom in to see what has he got there is it Jemison or Jameson or is it Paddy or what has he got there? But I couldn't tell. Um, but seeing as it was a kind of a roll down theme, it's probably not whiskey. But I was kind of hopeful that it was like. I I do the same thing in movies where I'll where I'll pause it and I'll have a look at the back bar and be like, oh look at that, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we're we're a special we're a special type of people, you know. Well, look, it's an annual tradition in our house. It's the same day every year we get the Christmas tree and the Christmas tree will have no decorations on and we'll just sit there and watch the toy show and we'll decorate it another time. But it's there and the toy show goes on and nothing will happen until the toy show is over. And so it's a nice little tradition to have. And I encourage everyone to go check it out. I put the link up there again if you're in the United States or Japan or Australia, wherever you're joining us from, check it out. It's on demand. You can go back and watch that and have a good old cry. Good for you. Good for you. All right, so we're going to talk about single malts. We'll take this blend off for fear yeah. it'll, uh, it'll, it'll infect. People. It'll confuse people. We're going to talk about single malts tonight, and I thought we'd start with something from um, W.D. O'Connell. Um, oh, I'll, I'll, sw I'll switch up here. Right, good man. Um, but before we do that, uh, single malts. So we're hearing a lot at the moment about single pot still and 
a lot of focus on Ireland's quintessential style of whiskey and a lot of money being put into brands like Red Breast. And now we're seeing more distilleries making single pot still. But before single pot still, malt whiskey was what was made around the country, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think generally when you talk to distillers, malt whiskey is a, it's a, a little bit of an easier style, I think, to make as well, because the unmalted barley, when you are distilling, tends to just be a little bit trickier as well. So there is a, there's a little bit more of a knack to it, I guess. So in general, it tended to be malt whiskey earlier on, and that's not maligning malt whiskey or, or, or the, the flavor profile. It's just just a bit of a, a fact that it, it was just the first type of whiskey that was generally being made, you know? Um, and I think when we, we focus a lot on single pot still, but, you know, absolutely with, with good reason, but definitely it's not to forget the, the single malt that's out there. What is a single malt, Michael? Single malt is malted barley from one distillery. So when you see the single there in any any label, so whether it's single pot still, single malt, um, it just means one distillery. So I think a lot of people when they're getting into whiskey will see the single and think it means a single cask. Um, whereas it just means it's a it's a blend of malts from one distillery. Uh, what you'll see more typically in Scotland, you might see blended malts. So you'd see a, a blend of different malts from from different distilleries. Now, we're starting to get to that point in Ireland. I think there are a couple now on the market, which is, again, is just a, a, an exciting thing. But the single in single malt just refers to the product of one distiller. And malt, um, malted barley, 100% malted barley, no other ingredients, just barley that has been malted, which is barley taken out of the fields, put in a, a dark room in a, in, a, in a drop of water, tricked into germinating, into sprouting. And then once it sprouts, heated to stop that, to dry out, stop that germination, and yeah. then and then, turn then into a, a mash and fermented and turned into beautiful whiskey. And I think when you taste a single malt, what what you get, especially younger single malts, before they're taken on the character of a cask, what you tend to get is these beautiful kind of cereal notes. You know, they like almost like eating a bre breakfast cereal or like you know digestive biscuits or something. You know, yeah, you're, yeah. you're getting the taste of the field really. Uh -huh. Um, there, whereas with something like a single pot still, you're going to get a little bit more spice and a little bit more, you know, stuff like ginger and black pepper on the palate. Whereas when you taste a, a blend or you taste a single malt, if the blend is quite, quite malty, so quite biscuity and you know ha has those kind of flavors, to it, quite cereal based, you, you can tell there's a high component of malt. And single malt as well has a different, it has a different mouthfeel to single pot still as well. So single pot still generally is quite spicy and it's quite oily, where single malt tends to be. I would almost say a little bit fuller in the mouth, like, you know what I mean? There's a little bit more of a, a body to it, a, a kind of a robustness to it. The the first one we're going to taste tonight is from W.D. O'Connell um, Whiskey Merchants. And before we move on to that, Quivine is wondering if my stand, am I using a, a Waterford Pilgrimage bottle as a stand? I am. I mean, you you got to you got to do what you can with what you have. We, we have the money to be putting into stands here now. We've got to recycle this is a this is a low budget operation here. We got to recycle our bottles. <laughs> I mean, it, it has to get used for something, Barry. You know, that's that. You can't you can't throw it away. You can't you can't. And I won't be drinking it anytime soon. Um, no. But uh, okay, so W.D. O'Connell Whiskey Merchants. We're going to talk about one of their whiskeys. And why don't we bring in the man himself behind W.D. O'Connell, Mr. Dahi O'Connell, to join us as well as an extra special guest, unannounced tonight. Dahi, you're very oh, that's welcome. A, that, that's a fine beard, isn't it? It's a lovely beard. You're on mute, oh, Dan. Is, is he on mute? We'll unmute him there. Oh, he left to unmute himself. There he How goes. Sorry about that. How are you? That's all right. The, the 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 challenges of online communication in the time of COVID, the most uttered phrase is, I think you're on mute. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was admiring your stand as well there, and I was saying, uh, if you could just see how my high-end studio is here, I have a uh, small children's IKEA table. On top of that, I have a small IKEA child's stool, and on top of that, I have my laptop. <laughs> I have um, I have a table with a Simpsons Monopoly box, and then my laptop. So I mean, yeah, <laughs> look, we're all in the we're all in the same boat here. High if end, you saw what this looked production. like behind the camera, you should see the mess behind the camera here. One of the days I'll swing it around, but this is not the polished show it might appear to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, we never we never thought that, Barry. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> What's in your glass, gents, by the way? Um, I've What's just finished it? off my, my sample of paddy, so I suppose I'll have I to pour myself off. some Bill Phil since you're here. Begrudging and I now. finished off uh, Blue Spot. I just emptied a glass of Blue Spot, and I'm about to pour in the sample you gave me, Dahi, when I was over in Ireland last week, which is yeah, the 
your 18 year old single malt Pedro Jimenez finish. And for that one then. <laughs> Do you know what? You better no and no better man to be able to talk us through it. And and I have lots of questions about single malt and your devotion to single malt. Um, but help us understand what this PX eighteen is. That's that's the actual bottle in case because Barry 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 wasn't uh, lucky enough for me to be able to give. Him no, I enough, so. I only got this. This is the size of the bottle. I, I get entitled <laughs> to like. I'd say I'd say it's a special man gets given a free bottle off you, don't I? <laughs> so if, the pope, if, the pope, if the pope came knock, knocking you'd still Sorry, try you the pope the <laughs> <laughs> but they're smaller know. bottles aren't they these are 500 milliliter bottles yeah in ireland yeah they're they're 50 cl or 500 mil bottle um at cast strength they were part of our first cast strength releases and it was a bill fill one as well um and due to the excise duty and the cost of <laughs> of um, putting out cast strength whiskies here, I just decided to put them in at a 50 CL, which kept the price point down similar to a 70 CL bottle at say a lower ABV, ABV like a 46% or 47.5 in the bill fill case. So just wanted to bring more bottles available for more people to get a chance to open them as well. Um, and then I suppose one other part reason for that then was to, um, kind of have make a statement so when people see our 50 cl bottle in future they'll know it's a cast strength bottle in ireland obviously when we go to the states um we'll, we'll have to rejig that maybe in 375 or we might just go straight to 750 because excise isn't such an issue over there so um we just have to look at it from other markets and see so Dahi, you you've been on with us before talking about bill phil i think in the past which i have here put it up there for show Seeing it was the only full bottle I had with me at the moment. Um, but tell our... I had a bottle of the PX. I had the PX17, but uh, I gave it to somebody else. Because once I'd taken a few drinks out of it, I thought, wouldn't it be good to share the love around? And I'm sure you'd appreciate more people trying it than just sitting on my shelf uh, all the time as well. So I gave that away. Probably yeah. the audience has it. Um, but tell me about... To help the audience understand what WD O'Connell Whiskey Merchants is and what you do. Okay, yeah, so... Um... I'm an independent bottler and uh, basically I, I source whiskey from, from various distilleries in Ireland and uh, we've actually sourced some from abroad also, but the focus is on Irish whiskey and uh, we then may apply a cask finish or we may mature it for longer um, or we might just find something that we like and bottle it. So we're flexible enough to do that. and. Um, I guess in the past, it's Scottish uh, names are known more as independent bottlers. In Ireland, Bonder would be more of a, a, a colloquialism we'd use locally. Um, but, you know, if you look at Cadenheads, Gordon MacPhail, North Star, Adelphi, Douglas Lang, there's, there's, a, there's a huge list of independent bottlers from, from, from Scotland. And I, I suppose I want to kind of, I would try to model ourselves more on, on a kind of a hybrid model of that. <coughs> Irish bonder, I suppose, um, going forward, and we don't have any plans to ever have a distillery. Yeah, I, th I think I think sorry, Barry, if you don't mind, like I think one of the things that excites me about WD O'Connell is because I'm, I'm quite a big Scotch fan as well, and some of my favourite Scotch bottlings tend to come from the likes of Adelphi and Cadenheads and and these kind of independent bottlers, and just because they have the ability to kind of do something a little bit different that's almost away from the house style of certain certain distilleries. Um, so I think that you've hit on a bit of a niche there as well. Yeah, well, it's, I guess the landscape has changed. I said to Barry in a chat um, on the Stories and Sips podcast as well that, you know, I, I did look at opening a distillery several years back and then, like, ultimately, I, I didn't do it for, for multiple reasons, but you couldn't really have set your sights as becoming an independent bottler in Ireland five years ago. You know, yeah. there wasn't... There wasn't that many distilleries like five years ago there was five six distilleries yeah yeah Today we have 34 and growing you know with the next five years it might up to 40 40 45 so that's what a time to be alive that's yeah yeah it's exciting so it's uh like at the moment obviously we have to use stock still from limited players <laughs> so but but that will change um and uh it'd be it'd be quite exciting and in the meantime there's really fantastic mature stock there from Great Northern, Cooley, 
up north, down south, um, southwest maybe, who knows, and uh, they, and further afield, places like Japan and Scotland as well. So uh, I think there'll be plenty of interesting things we can do in the meantime. Tell us about this particular whiskey then, this uh, 18 year old single malt. Um, this is the second iteration of an original sourcing, is it? So there was a 17 year old, is this the same stock that's just a year older or is it a separate? Yeah, it's the original stock that we vatted together. Um, we, we, were, we got several casks of, of this, uh, at the time it was 16 year old um, single malt from Cooley and we, we, we vatted them together, which means we disgorged them, put them all together into, into a, a tank and then we recast them or re-gauge them, some people would say. Um, into Pedro Jimenez casks, two two five liter Pedro Jimenez casks, and um, the seventeen had spent just six months in the PS cask, and it was a nice. And we did at forty six percent ABV, and that gave a, a kind of a nice introduction to PX. And I think I, I really wanted to do it at cast strength, so I'm really glad. Then you know, thirteen months later, we were able to uh, from the original recasking date. Um, disgorge this particular cask and we have more of that stock still so we you know you'll be seeing a 19 and a 20 and okay you know a few more depend, depending interesting on how to get, depending on how many years we can stretch out of it yeah keep making See, the bottle smaller every, every year make the bottle smaller it'll go for years might be onto something barry yeah we might get down to 200 mils who knows yeah yeah little, little miniatures little, like this little tiny little knees yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is I, this is a prototype for his next release <laughs> <laughs> Don't be giving away um, I won't. I won't. Uh, a question came in for you, which I, I was going to ask you, uh, which is, Dahi, what's the process then of picking the cask? Surely you just can't walk into the Great Northern Distillery Warehouse and point at barrels. Yeah, you can't, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, you can't. But no, what, like obviously the, the process is different in, in different distilleries. Or, or you might be buying off third parties. They might not be um, with that particular distillery anymore. You know, somebody else might have acquired a stock as an investment. So um, it depends who you're buying off. But essentially, uh, say for the Bill Phil stock, for example, that's, you know, we have a lot more of that. So Pete had single mod. So we'd just buy, we'd actually just buy pallets of it at a time. And then from there, you would, you would start picking your casts then at that point in time. When you're going something down the road of maybe a 2002 malt or, older or maybe you know anything from i suppose 2008 back you're going to be examining the casks in a little more detail and you're going to be sampling them before you pick one where do you age your your stock then you you have a are you you're not maturing it yourself you, you don't have your own bonded warehouse yet that's something that you're you're working on uh, so you you third party mature that elsewhere as well yeah so wherever we buy it we generally leave it so if it's okay. in GND or if it's in yeah wherever yeah it gets left, um, or we can move it to our own. We have we are I'm a, I am a bonded tenant, so it means we we have a, we have a a tenancy agreement with somebody who has a bond in Cork. So if we need to move stuff, then we can move it there. Woo up Cork, um, three hundred and sixty three bottles, five hundred milliliters each. Uh, are they still available anywhere, or do they sell out quickly? The vast majority went very quickly, um, and I think Irish malls might have about 30 bottles left, and there's handfuls of bottles here and there around the country, so there might be 50 or 60 bottles around Ireland. Would you do me uh, the favor of kind of walking me through this whiskey then from kind of a nosing and tasting perspective? I'm, I'm curious on the, I'm very interested in PX and Sherry and its contribution. I'd love to get your kind of expert yeah. guidance on the nosing and the sipping of it. Absolutely, yeah. You, um, you have a port, have you? Have you got some? Microphone? I have a port. I just have Bill Phil, so I'll just I'll just play along and pretend I have it. <laughs> Did you drink all your seventeen last week? It's very similar. No, to 17, yeah. yeah, no. I had about a, I had about a half a bottle of the seventeen, and it's just I think at forty six percent, it's just it's such an easy drinking whiskey as well. You know what I mean? It just tends to disappear yeah. quite quickly. And yeah. I think the great the great thing about a, about your stuff so far is everyone seems to be opening it and drinking it. You know. Yeah, it's great to see that, and that's that's exactly what we want. You know, it's I don't like to see bottles sitting on shelves myself. So, um, and Naggins, funny Naggins, David Mara, because uh, I was speaking about that with somebody uh, recently. We won't mention his name. I don't. I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think we should ever mention David Mara's name. 
No. Um, in fact, we'll, re we'll remove his comment from the screen right now so we can't even remember who he is. Um, but, but Dave Myers onto something with sizes. of, of for, for the longest time, I've been pushing whiskey brands in Ireland to make miniatures of their full bottles because it's so hard to get people to commit $80, 100 dollars to a bottle they've never tried before and if they can't get it on a shelf in a bar as easily as you could in ireland how will they ever know and i think it's too big of a hurdle to ask people to get over so the smaller the bottle samples that are available i think the better I, you're dead right yeah like we i think you've seen a huge growth in the last six months even um of of babies available and uh baby whiskey bottles that is <laughs> and <laughs> babies too to be fair <laughs> COVID, COVID's been hard for people and um uh it's definitely something we want to get into and i was hoping to have uh, start a, a gift pack series for, from this christmas but it was just too 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 hard to get it bottled in that when we don't have our own facility and um i really want to put them into our own style bottle rather than a generic bottle as well good which which is a little more tricky so um we get there we, i'd say this time next year we'll, we'll all be plugging plugging the hell out of uh Bill Phil and PX series and pot still. Well, if you can get miniatures over here to me, I've got a big audience who'll, who'll buy them up. Let me tell you, they'll buy them up. Um, absolutely. Get, get something there, yeah. Absolutely. And I, I think Ireland as a country buys some of the, the most naggins per capita in the, in the world from, from a whiskey sales perspective as well. And I think that's just, it's probably a lot to do with our excise and, the, you know, people, people maybe just go in and buy it, buy a nagin. Whereas I suppose in the States, you can go into a certain place and get a, a bottle of whiskey for $9. You know what I mean? You yeah. can. Yeah. If you want, if you really want to get a bottle for nine dollars, you probably can. Whereas in Ireland, you're probably talking twenty euro minimum, you know. But is it not also to do with the the convenience of the flat side of the bottle being able to live against your body nicely when you're at a at a, a, a funeral or a wedding or, or any kind of a family gathering? Yeah, yeah, and I suppose uh, when you're at a GA match and you just want to slide it out of the pocket back like, <laughs> illicitly and just you want to pour yourself some of that sweet, sweet paddy, get the plug in. Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I certainly think there's an element to that, but we as a country, I think, have taken to the na nagging a lot more than uh, than many other places. But there's probably historical reasons for that as well. Like, like uh, he who will not be named said there that it is a historical thing in Ireland. You do see old naggins of red breasts and stuff. I remember Willie Murphy one day at a at a particular thing. You know, we we all know Willie from a one of the world's probably foremost red breast whiskey collectors. Just came up, tapped me on the shoulder, and. And you could tap people on the shoulder and just pull the a nag in a red breast tin from his pocket and goes, Can you show me your glass there. You know what I mean? He just tipped it in. <laughs> so like, you know, it's it's a great thing that you used to be able to get these these super whiskies in, in nagging format as well. Yeah. I, I I back in back in the old days, Barry, you you remember the Savoy in the red rooms in Cork and uh, <laughs> we can't be confiscating uh Manny's a nagging of vodka. Um on Tuesdays and Thursday nights from the, the, the local students out in CIT and UCC. No wonder. And uh, we used to have a tree called the vodka tree. <laughs> <laughs> we used to just pour it down the vodka tree in front of them and then say, on you go now and spend some money, thank you. <laughs> no, no wonder they were bringing in their own vodka, the price of drinks that you were charging there at the time. Like <laughs> well, we, had great, we had great deals back in the day. Back, we, yeah, wouldn't be Our allowed. students, sure. Wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Just that was probably I mean, the height of the Celtic Tiger. Everyone had loads of money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there were great things happening in Cork. Like, I was, I had Ernest Cantlin from uh, Electric on the podcast there last week or two weeks ago. And Ernest is be a very, um, he's got his own line of whiskeys now, Red Earl Whiskey, and a few more coming out. But he's a great man for the promotions and getting people into pubs. And Sober Lane in Cork would be well known for doing crazy promotions that got people in the door. He had that bar filled every day of the week when everyone else was wondering, how do we sell a pint? Like Ernest had the place chock a block would like pay, pay 20 euros at the door and then have all your drinks for nothing inside. And they might not have been the most legal of promotions at all times, but he filled the place. Like, I would, wouldn't let that get in the way, you know, like Cork Publican. Cork Publican. Can't go wrong. Like, um, we, we went down about six rabbit holes there on the way to tasting this PX 18. Um, yeah. we, we've, so, we, we've just about come back out. Yeah. So like you have it there in front of you. It's pretty heavy on a cocoa on the nose for me anyway. Um, how about you? Mm. Some r nice raisins. It's very dark on the nose, right? Yeah. Yeah, you chocolate. Know, that fifty-eight point one six percent ABV, which is which is phenomenal, really, for an eighteen. Um, 
18 and a half year old whiskey that has been recast as well so that like when we got it it was at 59.5 percent so it's 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 bare it's barely lost much abv and initially it probably would have been cast at 63 percent so when you take in that drop over 18 years it's in, it's phenomenal and i think it's testament to the quality of casks that it was in from day one you know when it started in Cooley. Um, what were those dahi what, what were those casks prior to the px cask they were first filled bourbon casks so it means okay. they've been freshly emptied bourbon shipped to ireland and refilled so um it's the 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 px is is light on the nose isn't it I, I, it's not very prominent to me on the nose now yeah there's a sweetness there i think and, and you're getting like and the cocoa is that you, the cocoa that you're getting or the raisins is probably coming from the px whereas you're probably getting some toasted oak maybe and that's the that's the bourbon that's that's the, <coughs> the trademark um single malt bourbon cast matured whiskey like that you're getting there yes and this, the good thing with this is we use seasoned casks here. So a lot, yeah. a lot of people will be saying, you know, don't tell anyone that. But, you know, we, you know, we didn't go out and get a, a PX cask that had been, you know, matured, matured PX. In a, uh, in a Solera system for 40 for, years kind of thing. For 30 years and it just exhausted everything. You know, we got PX casks, which had been seasoned PX casks, which have been made with, first of all, American, American oak as well. So they complement the existing oak that influence that the whiskey had and because it was a season cask it, it's not it's not overpowering it and yeah um, yeah it, it it just seems to settle with it better and you know you'd have seen a lot of sherry cask finish if you if you've tried a lot of them from scotland because this is a double distilled single malt as well so similar to a lot of a lot of what comes out of scotland and they can be quite overpowering and astringent um at times as well, even the PX, I know you probably get more of that from Palacatardo, Palacatado and Oloroso, but they do become quite astringent and um, they, they can take over and people would call them sherry bombs. So this is definitely yeah. not a sherry bomb. Um, yeah. It's just a nice influence. And again, it's a finish. It's not an all fully matured uh, sherry cask finish either. You, you mentioned seasoned casks so those are casks that are typically made to order but from a distillery who has placed an order the sherry is seasoned for two years inside the barrel inside the cask before it's emptied and then shipped to the distillery as opposed to the historic method of a cask that shipped sherry to yeah. the to europe to the united or the united <coughs> kingdom etc but but you talk there michael about the solera system there's no distilleries today getting barrels from this getting casks from the solera system is it are 40 50 years old no, because I mean that that'd be totally unsustainable. If if you look yeah. at the amount of sherry that's sold now in comparison to what used to be sold, and you know if, if we roll back the clock in comparison to, to how much whiskey is sold now, it's, it's very much the the sherry the sherry in the same way as you know whiskey is dependent on the, the sherry production for for sherry casks, but sherry the sherry production is is very much dependent on whiskey for somewhere to sell their casks. As well, you know it is a it is a form of of revenue for them, and I think. It is a really important one because, you know, whiskey is by is by far and away the more popular drink these days. And I think for a lot of people, though, that one of the really interesting experiments and something that really helped me in my understanding of sherry cask whiskey is is to go away if you have, and if you haven't tasted a, a Pedro Jimenez or a, an all or also sherry on their own, is to literally go there, get a get a bottle of it and, and sip it, and just you can get the notes that you're are going to then come across in the whiskey and it'll just make so much more sense to you where it's coming from. Like I remember the first time I got a Pedro Jimenez sherry and it, it's like drinking syrup. It's it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous, but mm. you probably drink this much of it and you go, okay, that's, that's enough yeah. now. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's really, really sweet. It's, I think it's a, is it a hundred grams of sugar per liter or something? You know what I mean? It is a super, super sweet drink, you know? And it's made um, of white, a white grape as well. Yeah, it's it's Moscatel and Pedro Jimenez, I think. Is it? Is that? Is yeah, that? Is that? Yeah, Moscatel. Yeah, method. Yeah. Um, um, and the Solera system, you know, it's it's a it's a system of fractional maturation where you're taking out a little bit out of each cask, passing it into the next cask and stuff, which is a super interesting way to do it as well. But yeah, like you said, Barry, it's just it'd be unsustainable for distilleries to be pulling a huge amount of cask from that system. It just just wouldn't work. Absolutely, and like a lot, like the reality is, a lot of those casks are going to be quite tired. As well so once you get the once you get the 
the sherry influence out of it. It probably doesn't have much more to offer. So I think a season, I think the season, look, it's, it's historical versus, you know, modern whiskey. And I think there's a lot of great things from historic whiskey that, that we can keep and, and do, but, and carry yeah. on, but you know, there are new methodologies there and if they're better and they're more efficient, um, then by all means they, they should be explored. And that's what we, that's what we'll certainly be doing. Anyway. Um, a few of the comments come in about how sweet and how kind of layered in sweetness this PX, both the 17 and 18 is, um, it is a kind of a boiled sweet kind of a sweetness. There's a kind of a, like a sucky sweet kind of a sweetness to it. <laughs> How, how does that translate to America, Barry? How does sucky sweet? How does su do sucky sweets translate? Well, um, if you've ever watched Unbelievables, <laughs> <laughs> have you a sucky sweet there? You have a hair and sweet. You have. You've, hair lost, sweet. you've, you've lost them all now. They're all gone. They're all Absolutely. gone. People yeah. are tuning out in their droves. <laughs> um, it's um, like it's red. You're getting a lot of red berries on the palate, like a red berry coolie type. Especially mm. if you add a few drops of water, you know, you'll get you, it'll open up a little more, and that's the joy of having that cast strength. You can you can dip, you can play around with it and go through the layers yourself. And it's it's interesting if you add some water, you'll get a creamier mouthfeel somewhere down around the fifty percent mark. And if you add a little bit more water again after that, that will disappear completely. And then after you get to forty six percent, for me, you know, it gets a little gets a little boring after that so um, yeah for, for you that's, I... that's just this particular whiskey i'm talking about and that's why we yeah. when we bottled them the whole idea is when i bought them that they, these are where i feel they're to be best enjoyed that doesn't mean you have to stick to that but if that's where i that's that's <clears throat> that should be the starting point hmm it's um i i love a thing there's a there's a flavor that's that that a profile or a set of notes that come to me from a single malt that has reached a certain age 14 15 16 plus years plus that is this wonderful kind of a, a green grape white grape fruitiness that feels kind of fragile like it's almost like glass uh, and i it's hard, i i i think in terms of color sometimes and and things that are nothing to do with whiskey but there's a, an amazing fruit white and green fruit to me on the uh, on an older single malt that hasn't been overpowered by a kind of that that dark raisin like that you talk about with the px that seems to me to me at least more on the nose than the palate with this one uh yeah i i, I guess so I, I guess there's some citrus in there or some sorry not citrus orchard fruits it is uh, yeah there's it to me it's quite orchardy yeah um but you don't get them on the palate you're right you're getting the, the white pepper and the a little, it's actually quite spicy for a single mm -hmm. you know you could you could you know if you were doing a blind tasting you might you might people might think it might be a pot still which is quite interesting i think um when you went to look for for whiskies for wd o'connell all of the whiskies you've released so far have all been single malts was there a reason why you focused on single malts specifically well i'm a big fan of single malt i was listening to michael speak about it earlier like it's a really, it's a pretty pure whiskey, you know, by definition, and it has so much complexity to it, and there's so much variation from the different distillates that you're getting. Um, and we make really good single malts in Ireland. Uh, you know, Bushmills have been making really good, high quality single malts, some of the best in the world for a long, 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 long time. And we, and Ireland has a history of making really good single malt, and Cooley as Cooley make fantastic single malt dingle are have really re more recently be bringing out some great stuff and all the really good single malt that you know from the middleton range whiskies that are out there and, and the blends that they use are all from bush mills as well so um it's definitely something i want to focus on and uh, Donnie, what, what would you say is the is the main difference between a single malt then and single pot still for you? Like, you know, what I mean, you're you're obviously focused on the single malt side of things at the moment. Like, what's in terms of a flavor profile? What's the what's the main difference for you? But it, it 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 is that it's that what we talk about all the time. It's that spiciness that I just even mentioned. That I know this one has a little, but it hasn't got it hasn't got the fierce spiciness that a pot still that we know. Ha and and remember, those pot stills that we're drinking are all coming from one distillery. Mm. Um, realistically you know there's a few new ones out um they're still quite green and then you've got some of the, the recent mint um dingle stuff is, is really good i have to say really really come on 
you know, and, and I've been speaking to a few of the distillers around Ireland and they're saying, you know, you really have to wait seven, eight plus years for a pot still to, to come into its own, you know, and that's, I think we're, we'll start seeing a lot more real nice pot still. So the main difference for me is that the oiliness and mouthfeel that we're, but that's what we're familiar with Middleton. I have some pot still from GND and it's completely different. It doesn't have mm. that. It doesn't have that. Like it's, it's, you know, it's pot, you know, it's not single malt, you know, it's not grain. So, so the only place you can place it is pot still, but it's not pot still as we know it, that we know that we're used to. So there's going to be a lot, there's going to be a lot of, uh, new varieties and styles coming out of pot still. And again, when you, when then you look at the GI style of things, if, you know, and the, there's a load of non GI pot still being distilled as well, whether it ever becomes GI pot still, who knows, but it's still, still Irish whiskey and it's still really delicious. So <laughs> Br Brendan Carty has entered the chat. <laughs> if, well, we've, we've all been taught to, to think that a single pot still tastes a certain way, but it's, we've been taught the Middleton way. It's, that's the style that's made in Middleton, to your point. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's yeah. fantastic. We just we just don't have the variety of pots of whiskey out there to, to, to be able to compare them and contrast them. And we will, we will, and you know, give it 10 years and we, we'll have a huge amount of them because a lot of the new distilleries are focusing on pots still. Um, it's hard to, for me, it's it's hard to beat that age single malt. Like I fell in love with Irish single malts through Bushmills 21 <coughs> before there was anything else aged from Bushmills. And that to me was a revelation in what a single malt could be because I thought that single pot still was the pinnacle. And then I tried this 21 year old single malt. And even though it was not at cask strength, but 40%, it was still this fruit explosion, which I'm getting so many notes similar to it now in the PX18, those, those lovely layered hard hard candy sweet fruit notes that come through but that to me was a revelation of what a single malt could be um they're so different as they age aren't they a young single malt is so different to an older single malt absolutely and uh you know if you look at the younger single malt that's not peated versus young peated single malt um there's a there's a, a chalk and cheese you know you wouldn't you wouldn't uh you, you probably wouldn't be as fond of some of the very young single malts that are not peated as, you know, yeah. Bill, Bill is quite young. Um, yeah. But, you know, lots of Scottish uh, um, peated whiskies are, are quite young, like the Octomore would be one of the more famous ones, I suppose, and in around five years. And and it just it just seems to take, it just seems to take yeah. peat really, really well. Like you can get a four or five year old peated single malt and it's a fantastically layered and complex whiskey in comparison to if you had that, like you said, if you, if you had that and it was unpeated, you just wouldn't have the same layers of complexity there at all. And it, it'd be quite spirity almost. Yeah. Except have... for, except for this. Because <laughs> when, when we, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, a bit of a segue, but like when we get into a three and a half year, three year, nine month old single malt here, we have to admit and acknowledge that there is no other distillery in the country making, l releasing young single malts this complex and this layered for my money. I'm not sponsored by them. Just saying. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know if you've tasted enough, or if fair. I have tasted yeah. Enough, right? Yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. Like nobody has released that quantity of it. That's for sure. Um, and they're definitely putting a huge amount of uh, time and effort into the whole process and the cats program and everything. It's it's really exciting what they're doing there. Like the the, whiskey, there's no doubt the whiskey is in in. in in 10 plus years time, we're going to be out of this world, I would say. Mm. You know? 100%. Um, this this PX18, when I first got introduced to PX, and again, I'm, I'm new to the world of whiskey. I'm only in it a few years. And the first real exposure to a massive PX contribution to me was the Dream Cask two years ago, the 20-year-old Dream Cask, which was just, I mean, that was like drinking a glass of sherry. It was so... <coughs> sherry forward to me that was and i love it like i fell in love with it i thought that's amazing and that was kind of my benchmark for px but this is a completely different P px contribution this is a finishing not a 20 year maturation and that's a short finish too you know and that's the difference you know and that's you'll be if for, on that journey from 17 18 19 20 it's the same single malt in the same casks that that will that you'll be able to go on, that you'll be able to like if you're lucky enough or happy enough to sam sample them all the way through you'll see the px um 
apply yeah. its, apply its stamp, I guess, even from a season cast because it was three years, so it is it, it would have set in enough. Um, but it's just if we decided to leave it a little longer, that we want to make sure there's nice fresh wood there too. That we, yeah, yeah, that it can stay in and not and not recast it again and put you know tr- put something else into it to try and you know I don't know li- make it too complicated. I think I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, and that's the same. Yeah. We feel it's as simple as possible, and you know the next few releases they're all like they're they're all pretty simple. We're not trying to do you know five different cast types batted together and you know and i'll you can get some amazing whiskeys i I'm, I'm not a blender so i'm not going to i'm not going to go down that route that's somebody else's skill set um maybe in 20 years i'll have some sort of skills that i can start blending with but at the moment I'm trying you, you, to you grow a good beard that's a skill yeah it's a <laughs> it's not that difficult in co- during covid i'll tell you that much <laughs> I don't know, I've been trying for I've been trying for twenty years, and look, I can't get much more than this. Like, <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's very important in the Irish whiskey industry to to have a good beard. Like in a, in a lot of cases, like, and I mean, it, it it definitely gives you a little bit more credibility. I mean, look at Dave Dave, Dave, Dave Cummins there up on the screen. There, there's another man yes. with a great beard. Like, you know, lots of beards yeah. here. And and Dave Cummins wants to know, you know, talking about future releases. Would and you talked about Octomore from Brooklady. Would you ever go for or make a Pete Monster style single malt dahi? Look, I, I'm open to anything, really, Dave. It just depends on what I can get my hands on, and and that that's pretty much it. And it, it's it's not that easy get in in Ireland. It's not that easy get mature stocks. So there's a lot of younger stocks readily available. Um, Scotland, Scotland, there's a there's a lot more. I do have some some peated Scotch uh, as well lined up. Whether you call it a peat monster or not, Dave, you'll have to wait and see. But it it just it just depends. And it might necessarily be for the Irish market then, if it was a peak monster, as you like, as you described, because even I particular, I personally wouldn't be a huge fan of say a lag of volume. Now that wouldn't, yeah. that wouldn't uh, float my boat. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, what, what about you? You talked about other future releases then. Are there any future releases in the pipeline that we should be aware of, know about, look at the grin in his face. Look, look as, as if, as if this was a setup question, which it wasn't, but tell us what's coming. <laughs> uh, well, I can't tell I can't tell you what's coming just yet, but there is, there is, um, I can tell you some of it. So like we have a new batch of Bill Phil coming out, which is a different fatting from two different distillate years. Um, so that's, again, it's just a slight variation, but it's still going, <coughs> um, sticking to the Bill Phil, um, core the core values or taste values i guess are there with the very citrus forward and um, nice smoky nose but but on the palate giving you something completely different and and fruity um but then next year we've got a single grain series coming out um which i'm quite excited about and uh we should have something else on december 12th as well we're just hopefully it gets bottled in time and it'll be a brand new uh, brand new uh, range of whiskey um, from WD. Is, I can't give away anything just yet. Michael might have this, some of his glasses tonight, actually. Well, he does. He told me he had some samples of something. He wouldn't tell me what it was. But I will draw your attention to the fact that this is the third time we've spoken on a lock-in or a podcast. And on each occasion, you've said, I have something coming, but I can't tell you anything about it. And I, it's a wonder I ask you back at all because I get nothing out of you. I get no information. I get no news about what's coming down the pipeline. Now is your chance. If you want to come back a fourth time, we need it now. I have a bag of samples here in front of me. Like, I mean, and I'm just, I'm just wondering what, what they are. He, I, they were, they were sent to me. You know, he was like, "Are you on the lock in?" I said, "I am. I'm on Friday night." And he goes, "I might be on myself. I'll send you a few samples." Like, and so I was oh, so you get the samples. Take. I don't, I, yeah. I don't, I, I don't even get samples. Not, even, not only do I don't get samples, I don't even get the information. About the samples, yeah. <laughs> Unfor- unfortunately, I'm just I just don't want to jinx it, and <laughs> like after the day I had today, that could happen. So, um, well, I, I understand. I, I know, Harry, as soon as I know, right? As soon as I'm happy to confirm everything is 100. Like I have the label design, Barry. I have everything right. lined up. I just don't want anything to go wrong. <laughs> um, so what I'll do is, as soon as I ha- I'm 100 percent confident, I will send you. You you can you can post it out there and say this was covered. How fair play, you? fair play. Um, well, look, it, it is well known that the lock in jinxes whiskey launches. So look, you got to be careful. You have to be careful. 
Michael, you should pour you should pour uh, one of those samples in uh, the one ending in five. Oh, well, you don't you don't have to tell me twice. Now I've no idea what it is. To be fair, live, so you can do a live. This is the first tasting of it, and you can do a live. Uh, Oh, this is great. Brilliant. First tasting of something. We don't know what it is. We can't talk about it. You um, won't tell me. This is like, this Barry, is like trying to show Barry, colors on radio. Pour, actually, I'm, we want to talk about, I'm going to pour this little sample. What's I that think. there? Waterford? Or oh, Ned's, Ned's Blend. Bottle. Right. Okay. Great. Have you tried it yet? Not Ned's blend, no, I haven't. But I've got a few other Waterford samples here, Waterford bottles. Is this not, is this not the pilgrimage? No, uh, no, oh, that, yeah. that's... Is it, no, no, that's separate. That's uh, from his own little, his bucket, his bucket of stuff beside the pilgrimage. All right, so we we'll try it out. Now. Just die, just so you know, Barry's going to murder you. You know what I mean? Just just so you know, like, you know. Yeah, I know he's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, listen... I'm happy to give a platform. I'm happy to put you on air and, and not say a word about what you've got and just drink it yourselves and Barry, toast you, each other. I tell you what, Barry, it's, it's, it's absolutely fucking delicious. You don't even need me here. like. But I do promise I'll let, I'll, let you, I'll let you announce it. I won't announce it. You can announce it. You say that now, but I'll wake up one morning and there'll be 45 people posting about a thing that no, no, you tasted first here. You have my word now. I'll... 100%. All right. All right. right. Good man. Good man. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, while you're sipping on that lovely thing, I'm going to pour some water for it. Moving very quickly away from WD O'Connell there. Which which one is that, Barry? This is Dunbell. This is the US only online uh, release, Dunbell 1.1, um, which is a a very unusual single malt. And we've talked about Waterford in the past. We've had Ned on. We'll probably have Mark Rainey in the future for something we're working on. And this, I'm going to let it sit here in my little pilgrimage box. Uh, for those of our American audience that aren't familiar with Waterford Whiskey, single malt only producer. They don't spell whiskey with an E. Uh, Englishman started a distillery in an old Diageo brewery in Waterford on the River Shore and is making whiskey uh, based on kind of single farms. One farm of barley equals one distillation equals one bottling. And it's a unique approach. It's an expensive approach. It's an inefficient approach, but it's turning out remarkable whiskeys. And I'm very impressed by what they've released so far. And this Dunbell is a very, very unusual style of whiskey. Umami. I was, I was just when you mentioned no E, Barry, I saw you during the week. Our, uh, obviously, Leo Varadkar, our tarnished, had posted up a post during the week and he spelled whiskey two different ways in the post. That's and he right. was. He was immediately leapt on by a, by a number of the, the public. And I, I saw you posting on it, actually. You can spell it both ways. And I saw a good few people in the comments, a good few of our Irish whiskey friends commenting in the comments, no, no, he's correct. You can spell it both ways. And a lot of them were citing Waterford whiskey as their, as their example, like, you know? That's right. That's right. Um, there seems to be some problem with the Facebook feed here, as a few of you are saying. And I saw the numbers just fall off a cliff all of a sudden for Facebook. Uh, if you're... Still on, you want to switch to YouTube. It seems like a lot of you have gone over to YouTube, but something must have happened with the Facebook feed. Um, maybe I can ask Mrs. Stories and Sips to check it. Um, let me see. Let me just do a quick check, gentlemen, while we're looking at this. Yeah, it just says it's ended, Barry, when I click into it. Is that right? And we're still here. Of, uh, information. <laughs> let me have a look. That's very unusual. Yeah, it seems to have stopped on the Facebook side of things. Interesting. Um, yeah, okay, YouTube. Everyone's over on YouTube. That's strange. Lots of problems with it on Facebook, it seems. Let me put up a little banner here so people know. Looks like Facebook dropped. It's very unusual. This is this is delicious, by the way, Johnny. You like it? Jeez. Yeah, no, it's delicious. I wish I wish he could get us some to Barry. I'd say he really liked this. He likes. Well, I, actually, he likes I, actually, I offered to get him some, but he was, I didn't realize he was flying out that same day. So ah, okay. Yeah. He, he waited. He checked the flight schedules. He looked for my name, yeah, and then yeah. as soon as he knew I was boarding, he said, "Can I get you a big hamper full of whiskey?" <laughs> <laughs> that definitely didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's getting a hamper from me. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't have the quantities to give out hampers. 
<laughs> so what are you sipping on there? Uh, you, you said it's very good, Michael. Um, Jahi, explain what that is uh, in, in very deep detail. It's a, it's a older than 10 years, single malt. Right. And it's cast strength. Uh, very it's, dark. Yeah, it's very, it's very delicious, and it's a, it's a Van de Natural. Uh, since we're talking about water, it's a Van de Natural cask finish, or not finish, ah. all maturation. Ah. And this is the one for for December. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And this is a new line of whiskies. This is a new no, range. This might be like it might be one or there might be one or two bottlings. There won't be much of it. Wow. Yeah. Right, well, uh, the KGB would probably get more out of you, uh, but sure, look. Yeah, honestly, my, I, I, I just, I just, <laughs> I can't. Should we, have waited, should we have waited until next week to have you on? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, I hope if, if I was on next week, uh, well, next week, if if I can clarify by next Friday, everything is, is, is good, I will just send you the details and you can go with it. Very uh, good, man. Barry gets the exclusive. Hey, I know. We're an exclusive. I, yeah. Honestly, I, I really wish I, I was hoping to, to tell you tonight and show you an image and everything, but I just yeah. Just I sure look. I, I I can't get I can't have it all. I can't have it all. No. Um oh. okay, so you're what are you so okay, so you're sipping on this Van de Natural, ten year old single mm. cask, single malt, I'd imagine. Um okay, well we'll come back to it. I'm sipping on Waterford. Let me put it up here. Waterford Dunbell 1.1. Um, and for those people who don't know, I've got another sample bottle of it here. This is the Dunbell. It's three years, spirit age, 1,343 days. So what's that? That's four years, almost four years. What, count, what county is that, Barry? This is... Leash, is it? Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong bottle. Jeepers. Um, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a big, I'm, I'm a big fan of the fact that you know you have you have one from almost you know you've won from so such you've won from it nearly everywhere at this point like you know there's a couple. This of one is first. from well, Kilkenny, the Midland. Kil Kilkenny, Kilkenny, Dunbell and Kilkenny. Kilkenny. Yeah. yeah, this oh, is well, from. I, um, I have Ned's blend, and it's, I have to say it's very very tasty. Um, these are available in the US now. This is the only one that's available. Um, this is US exclusive, Dunbell, single farm origin 1.1. And uh, it's imported by Glass Revolution Imports. And if you go to glassrev.com slash Waterford, you'll find all the stockists of Waterford around the US. And it's making its way onto shelves. And I think I showed it in a previous episode. I, sh I shared the terroir code on the back of each bottle that'll give you all the information about the farm. So let me just do a quick share here to show people what that looks like. Um, this is when you type in the code that comes in the back of the bottle, you will get taken here. And this gives you all the key facts about the whiskey. Three years and eight months, ABV 50%. It gives you a map of where the Dunbell farm is in relation to Waterford Distillery. History of Dunbell, the sound of Dunbell, there's its sound cloud. You can hear the barley blowing in the wind. You can hear a bird take a little dump. You can hear it all. It's crystal clear. <laughs> Whatever you want, it's all there. I think that's absolutely class. Like I remember, because I, I clicked in the Bano, the Bano Island was the first one I bought being, being from Wexford. And you, you click in and you can literally hear the sea and you can hear everything around it. It's just a, it's a nice touch. Like, you know what I mean? It's just a, it, it puts you in the mood of the whiskey, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It does. It's, um, yeah, it's fascinating, actually, um, what they share here and just the information they give us is, is just absolutely <clears throat> incredible. The amount of data collection that's going into each of these releases, um, this is not a whiskey for everybody. And, and people will, I've heard complaints that for the price, they can get a 10-year-old whiskey, a 12-year-old whiskey. They can get a red breast 12 year old for the same price as they can get a Waterford three and a half year old, four year old whiskey. And, and well, they might, um, the, that I don't think you can compare ages. I, I think it's a very unusual way of comparing whiskey, just saying like for like, because there are no two whiskeys that are like for like, but it's a, this is a study in something other than just 
whiskey, it's a study in something bigger than an industrial production of whiskey. It's an agricultural project to me. And I don't think there's anything that represents Ireland more than agriculture. And we're getting close to the farms and the farmers and the growers. And that to me is a, a wonderful angle and a wonderful story that goes with every bottle. And I, I've spoken to a few of the growers and they've shared their pride that their name is on the front of a bottle of whiskey. And for years they've been making, they've been producing crops and then growing cattle and sending them off and not knowing where they end up. And now for the first time ever, they know where their product, where their produce ends ends up and it's on a bottle, in a bottle with their name on it. Amazing pride. So, something yeah. to be proud of. And look, they, they've started an entire movement, you know what I mean? It, it is a, it is now a movement and you see, I think just during the week as well, Tipperary brought out their, their newest release and it's, it's similar in terms of, uh, in terms of the amount of information and the field and the type of barley and stuff and everything that's there in terms of terroir codes and stuff. And having talked to, to Jennifer in, uh, in Tipperary, that was their plan a long, a long while back as well. You know what I mean? So, but Waterford are very much the tip of the spear on this one. They got there first and it's just, it is an amazing amount of detail when you go into it. And I suppose everybody in Irish whiskey is looking for transparency now. That's what everybody's really craving. And I suppose, Di, you've hit a bit of a sweet spot on that as well. You're, you know, apart from tonight, and uh you know being transparent about everything uh and uh but i i think i think i think you'll agree barry that, that that transparency is what people are are responding to as well i agree i agree 100 percent um we're going here what, what we're going to do here is we're going to try and um put this stream live on facebook again it looks like it, people have moved over to youtube a lot of people saying they want to have the crack on the chat and facebook so here's what we're going to do we're going to end this broadcast. We're going to start this broadcast again. Um, sure. Let me see how we can do that. Everyone's in YouTube at the moment. Do, 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 do. For life based on not sharing samples. Oh, wait, now has it reconnected? We're having trouble streaming to Facebook. It seems like there's a Facebook. This may be an issue on Facebook's end. Um, let me see if we can. What we can do here. Hmm. Well, if we end the broadcast, no, you know what? People have moved over. The numbers are going back up here on people have moved over again uh, to YouTube. Okay. So we'll keep going. We'll keep going. We're grand. All right. Um, you're happy. You're happy. I'm happy enough. I'm happy enough. But I was just saying there that I think Ecklandville have been doing that as well. Like they've been, they grow, they're on a farm um, in down and they're, um, you know, their own distillers, which seven years have passed and we still haven't got to try any of it. And they're, they're definitely playing the waiting game. And, but they, they, I, think, I believe they've been doing that from day one, their own, their own barley as well. So it's grass to glass and some, some smaller, like Bally Keefe in, in, in Kilkenny maybe. And I'm yeah, Bally, Bally Keefe, uh, I visited the distillery and they, they talked about, you know, everything was from the farm. It was a single estate kind of, kind of thing as well. And, they were feeding the draft and the cattle and the cattle were of such high quality they're being sold for you know many multiples of of what a cattle of what cattle should be sold for and making excellent steaks so it's just it's, it's so many so many of the uh so many of the distilleries now are, are kind of getting into this <clears throat> terroir and uh they, this kind of you know they, they very much the traceability and and being very transparent and uh, given all these details that people are really seeking you know yeah and, and um, we're, like we're going we're we're um growing our own barley next year as well for some contract distilling so that that should be a bit of crack we'll see how that goes <laughs> all right so i've got a whole bunch of people who are sitting in facebook waiting for us so here's what we're going to do i'm going to send you guys a separate link in your messages we're going to join in again i'm going to end this broadcast we're going to start a new one if you don't mind and then everyone on no, no, facebook right. will be ready uh, because we can't let the people down. They've been here waiting patiently for Michael's shirt and Dahi's beard. So uh, we're going to end this broadcast and then I'm going to move over to Facebook. Go check our Facebook page and we'll find the new broadcast there. Hang in with me for five minutes. <laughs>